Good morning guys. It is Wednesday morning and here's what I'm taking with me to work today. I have my zero point coffee with one tablespoon of Dairy Star fat free half and half for zero smart points. I have Teamy Tea. It's one teaspoon of Teamy Skinny for zero smart points and some lemon juice. So coffee and tea are zero this morning. Tonight is a Teamy colon night so I just have this set out to remind myself. That is also zero smart points. Here's my lunch for today. It's a very simple, very basic lunch, and that is because we have some shenanigans going on tonight, which I will explain later. So over here I have, um, I think it's three ounces. It might be five ounces. It looks like five ounces. We'll go with five ounces of grilled chicken for three smart points. I have some horseradish mustard for zero smart points and one hard boiled egg for two smart points. And then I also have some mini baby bell peppers for zero smart points. So I'm heavy on the protein for a lunch so that it carries me over for as long as possible. So that is uh, five smart points for lunch. And then my snack is going to be more of the Hungry Girl Scoopable Apple Pie for zero smart points and a pear for zero smart points. And then that stuff there is for much later for dinner or after dinner. So everything that I'm having until dinner is going to be five smart points today. Hey everyone, quick outfit of the day. It's Wednesday. We just finished we just finished a huge Disney Channel's worldwide meeting. So I have been sitting for an hour and a half and I'm walking back to the office. No time for my regular walk break, but hopefully I can get some steps in later. Okay, it's like 4.45 and I'm only at 7,600 steps. Ah, super busy day today. Did not get to take my first walk break, although I did walk to a different campus, so you think that that would help. I'm on my second walk break. Um, at lunch, I had to go to the chiropractor again, so no walking there. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna get the rest of my steps in, but you know I'm gonna do it because you know I want my champagne tonight. So I went to the chiropractor and number one, I need to get some proper shoes for standing at my desk all day because I do stand at my desk all day. and. Um, it makes perfect sense. The shoes that I wear do not hurt my feet. And I kind of had this discussion with myself back when I was wearing flip-flops when I was walking so much and walking around Disneyland and I was wearing flip-flops and I was like, the flip-flops are fine because I'm not having any feet problems, no blisters, nothing hurts. But what I didn't realize or what I didn't think of was that the impact from my feet goes all the way up my spine. So that's when I started wearing my running shoes when I would go walking and every time I go to Disneyland now. So now the chiropractor is saying, if you're standing all day at your desk, which I do for probably 75% of the time, you need to get proper support while you're standing there. Okay, that makes sense. Why didn't I think of that? So I need to get some better shoes for standing at my desk, but I want to get the kind something with support that I can slip on and slip off because I also want to wear my cute shoes when I have to like walk around. So there's that. That's not so bad. The thing that I'm least happy about is that she also said, because on the days when I do running or I do yoga or I do both, then uh, my back hurts a little more and the faux sciatica hurts a little more. So of course she said, I need to reduce both of them by half. So that means I was aiming for four yoga classes a day, so I think two yoga classes a, or two, four a week, so two a week should be fine, and I'm actually okay with that. But that means my four mile runs now need to be two miles. And I said, well, I was running five, so maybe three. She's like, half. <laughs> so I guess two miles. So that's okay in the sense that I don't think that running two miles versus four miles is going to make me gain weight. That's not it at all. The thing that is now bothering me is that I signed up and paid money for a half marathon in January. 
that's not even bothering me so much because I can run a half marathon with very little training. What's really bothering me is that I signed up for and paid a lot of money for a full marathon in March. And I don't think I can run a full marathon without crawling unless I train. So I'm just hoping that the whole condition can get better and better quickly. Like I think I really need to start training January 1st at the latest to be able to run decently and in minimal pain by March. So I'm concerned about that. I am concerned. But you know what, I decided, okay, worst case scenario, and I can't really run very well, I will walk the marathon. A lot of people, thousands of people walk the LA Marathon. So I'll do my best, no matter what. I've never quit a marathon. I've never quit a race, ever. I will not drop out. I've always run everything I've signed up for. So I will do it regardless. Anyway, there's my depressing news for the day. So, you might wonder what we're doing tonight. And this is gonna sound so funny because you know that I've been so on fire and dedicated and focused the last uh, week. And it's finally paid off. And I did drop a little weight. Um, now, we're doing something tonight that is going to be a little sketchy. So we are going to Disneyland tonight, and we are literally going to taste every single pumpkin food we can find. And this sounds a little crazy, but we have literally been planning this for the longest time. We've been trying to work it into my schedule, and as far as being blocked out from Disneyland for so much of the holidays, it's been like impossible. So we finally worked it in. I decided we're just gonna have to go after work one day, so we're gonna do it. And now I have to work it into my points, which normally me, for me, is not a huge deal because we, on the weekends I just go a little nuts so we could say, oh, well, this is a weekend for me. But now I'm like laser focused. I wanna make this work. I want to stay as true to the plan as possible. So I've really been trying to figure out how to make this work. So we are tasting, I think we're tasting seven items tonight. And I have pre-tracked everything. I pre-tracked the amount that I think is a reasonable amount. It's not a large amount because we're tasting so many things, I really just need a small bit. But it's also not like a bite because that's just not even realistic for me. So I'm trying to track a realistic amount that will be like, oh, Julie, you don't need to go whole hog and eat everything, but you are seriously not gonna have just a bite. So what I've pre-tracked comes up to 54 smart points. And that doesn't even include the Bellini, which I will definitely have. So 54 smart points for the pumpkin food. Now, if I leave my tracker, I actually changed my tracker to do no swapping because I wanna to get to a point where I'm not using any fit points. And I'm, I'm pretty close to that actually from last weekend. I'm fairly close. Um, so I wanna to get to where I'm not using any fit points. I had switched my tracker to no swapping. If I switch my tracker back, no, no, even if I leave it, okay, so if I leave it where it is, and what I've pre-tracked for the whole week, it puts me at negative 46 for the week. The only way to make that up is to switch back to swapping and try to get 46 fit points for the week, which I know I can do. So that has to be my plan of action for this week, which is definitely not ideal. But I think if I go back and look at my tracker for last week, it would be interesting to see how many fit points I used last week. It's not an easy, you can't just look, you have to actually calculate it. So it's not something that's easy to look at, but it would be, I would imagine I maybe used about the same amount. So I'll probably still be in the same range, but this is Wednesday. I still have the weekend to get through. I have pre-tracked it. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm eating, but still weekends are difficult for me. So if I have this taste all the pumpkin stuff night, 
then I have to be dead on for what I have tracked for the weekend. <laughs> so it kind of ups the ante for me. I really have to be up for the challenge and be completely on task and motivated. So this is my plan, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get my 46 fit points for the week so that I can at least break even. I'm gonna taste all the yummy pumpkin stuff tonight. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna let you know if it's worth it or not. Hopefully if it's not worth it, I can stop eating it. Um, I'm gonna try and stay within what I've tracked for the portions. And if I can, I'll eat a little bit less where I can. So that's the plan for tonight. I have like an hour left to work before Eddie comes. So I need to get back. Oh, I don't know about my steps. So I need to figure out how many steps it's gonna be from the car to Disneyland entrance because I can't have my Bellini until I do my steps. So I don't want to be having that at 10 at night, but I'm trying to get as many as I can. And yeah, so I'll touch base with you guys probably when we're in the car. On the way, I'll let you know how many steps I got at that point. Ah, okay, after an hour and a half in the car, we're finally here. It is 7.35 and California Adventure closes at eight. So we're hurrying, we're hurrying to get down there. We are still walking, we are not taking the tram, which is probably faster anyway to walk at this point. And are you warm? Yeah. And I have about 10,500 steps. So time to go see what we can eat. Okay, we made it into California Adventure. You can see the Christmas lights behind me. Everybody is leaving. <laughs> Because we like are here salmon. with 10 minutes before I like, closing. I it's feel like salmon. It's 7.50 and the park closes at 8. Eddie feels like a salmon swimming upstream. We're going to find caramel popcorn. I know, I said all things like pumpkin, but <laughs> caramel popcorn sounds really good. And it's one other seasonal treat that we wanted to try. So that's first on the list. Okay guys, here it is, caramel popcorn. I heard the caramel popcorn at Disneyland California Adventure is really, really good. So we had to try it. One cup of caramel popcorn, 12 points. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna eat a cup too. So here we go. Oh, it's the crispy kind, not the sticky kind. Mm. You like it? Uh, it's kind of crispy, kind of chewy. Yeah, kind of chewy. It's good. Every bite I have, I think, oh my gosh, we rushed all the way over here for this. Mmm. Oh, worth it. Here we go. Okay, so we got the pumpkin spice churro, and they're extremely hot and extremely covered with pumpkin spice, and so fresh that while carrying it, a broken half. Perfect for Julie and I to share. So Julie, why don't you try it? Okay. First of all, I'm gonna give you a bite because I'm trying to eat a third of it, so. Here's my piece, a third. Okay, here we go. It's got like little orange sparklies on it. Pumpkin spice churro. Crispy? Crispy and warm. Mmm. Almost hot. Mmm. It's very good. And where did you get these? The Cozy Cone Motel. Okay, now it's 8.05 and we hit the two places at California Adventure that we wanted to go. So my final thoughts on the caramel popcorn, not worth it. It was kind of chewy Sticky. like yeah kind of stale like it probably had been sitting out all day no, which it, it probably stale. has i think it was just more covered not with stale caramel. just well but the humidity in the air kind of makes it and a caramel. little stale i didn't think there was that much caramel on it it wasn't very sweet so um the caramel popcorn one cup for 12 smart points not worth it my thoughts on the pumpkin spice churro worth it i actually broke up a third a piece so I could stick to what I tracked. A third a piece is four smart points. It was crispy and warm, almost hot inside. 
and delicious. The flavor is very, very close to a regular churro, but with just enough pumpkin spice flavor. It was good. It was worth it. Honestly, I'm really even thinking the popcorn is not 12 points because there was not that much sugar on it. So I think I'm going to count it for nine points for one cup. That sounds way more reasonable compared to what I just ate. It was not sugary coated gooey caramel popcorn at all. I don't know if you guys noticed in my video, but look what was behind me. This beautiful, gigantic Christmas tree is already up in California Adventure. It's so tall and so beautiful. I love Christmas. I'm literally right smack in the middle of enjoying Thanksgiving, but I really do love Christmas too. So, yay! Guys, look how beautiful the castle looks tonight. It's all snow top and brightly lit against the dark night sky. Just like in a fairy tale. That's awesome. Okay, so we struck out big time at the last two places. I was looking for a pumpkin cheese twist. I was really looking forward to that because that's like mostly bread and everything else we're trying is like all sweet stuff. So I really wanted that. Um, that place was closed. And then we were going to try pumpkin flan at the Mexican restaurant here at Disneyland. That place was closed. <laughs> so we are obviously at Disneyland now and stri struck out twice. However, we are now at the Jolly Holiday Restaurant Cafe and we just got two pumpkin items. We got a pumpkin muffin and some pumpkin cheesecake. Let me show you. Okay, here is the pumpkin muffin. It is big and beautiful and delicious. Half of a restaurant style pumpkin muffin is nine smart points. Over here is the pumpkin cheesecake and half of a fast food type cheesecake is six smart points. And that looks about right because it's not, it's not huge. So half of the pumpkin cheesecake will be six smart points and half of the pumpkin muffin will be nine smart points. I actually saved like 15 points by not having the two items that we missed out on, so doing good on points. Okay guys, pumpkin cheesecake, here we go. Let's smell it. it smells a little like pumpkin. Mm. Tastes a lot like pumpkin. Mm. It's very, very creamy, very, very pumpkin-y, not too rich, not too rich. No, it has a... Mm. That's good. It has some other flavor too. Maple? Maybe some maple. I wish I had more of the bottom crust. There's not much crust on the bottom. That's like, good. I like the crust. No one likes the crust. Everyone's like feeling it. Mm. And now for the muffin, which is never easy to eat on camera because muffins are messy. This muffin is very soft. A little crumbly, but very soft. something tart in there. I think it's apple, bits of apple. It's kind of tart and kind of chewy. But the pumpkin flavor is really good. It's very mild actually. There are some sugar crumbles on the top, which are really good. It's funny because I think the pumpkin cheesecake is maybe a little too pumpkin-y but the pumpkin muffin is maybe just not quite pumpkin enough. It's really good though. To the top, so okay, I tried that. Okay, that little frosting part right there is so sweet. I can't tell what it is. It's super sweet. It's way sweeter than buttercream, right? It's buttercream. That's buttercream? It's, whoa. I don't think I like buttercream anymore then. That's way too sweet. We decided to take a little break from food tasting and ride Pirates of the Caribbean because you cannot walk past Pirates of the Caribbean with no waiting and not do it. It would just be wrong. So we're doing it. It's cold in here because Pirates like it. It's 9.30 and I finally hit my 16,000 steps, but I did it. And we have one more pumpkin thing to taste. Okay, the last thing we're trying tonight are these Wetzel Pretzels Pumpkin Spice Bits. These are eight smart points for a half a bag. This is a really big bag, so I don't know if I can even eat half, 
but I'm gonna try them out. So it's just the basic pretzel bite. It's nice and warm, and it has the, it's like cinnamon sugar and pumpkin spice stuff on the outside. Mmm. Mm. It's really soft and doughy and yummy. And sweet. I don't really taste pumpkin though. It tastes like cinnamon sugar bread dough. It's pretty good, but it's not pumpkin-y. Oh, what time is it? So it's very late. We're in downtown Disney. No pomegranates. 10.40. They have no pomegranates. It's, it is 10.40. And we are still in downtown Disney. We're like the second to the last people to leave downtown Disney. The whole town is shutting down. People shutting down. So I have to say, guys, let's recap all of this pumpkin nonsense. We were a little bit late to the pumpkin train because Julie can only go to Disneyland on certain ridiculous days and I have to drive straight from work and I can get here with like an hour to spare. So I finally got to come here and taste all the pumpkin things or all the pumpkin things we could find because several places were closed by the time we got to the pumpkin things. So of all the pumpkin things that I tasted tonight, I have to say the best thing to me was... The street tacos. No, no, the best pumpkin thing to me was the Wetzel's, pretzel, pretzel. thank you, that's right. Wetzel's pretzels pumpkin bites. You know why? Buttery and pumpkin, not too sweet. Because yeah, it wasn't too sweet. It was the bready, carby, yummy, warm stuff I was craving, but not too sweet. You guys, when I tell you that I am like over sweets, I am really over sweets. And this is the baker who five years ago, three years ago, when we started baking cake pops, I our cake pops were twice the size as Starbucks, and I was eating three oh, of those a day. You're saying that right, right, right there where Starbucks is. You're bad mouthing Starbucks. No, my cake pops were way better. But I was eating three of those a day, and eating the cake, and licking the frosting. I was a sugar addict, and now I am so not into sweets. I thought if you put them in front of me, yes, I'll overdo it. But tonight was like, wah like too much sweet. If I could have something savory pumpkin right now, like pumpkin soup, please bring it on. All that pumpkin sweet was too much sweet. Churro so, was too sweet. The churro, it was all too sweet. Churro so, was too sweet. I think the muffin top was too sweet. And The muffin was probably my second favorite because it was so mild. The cheesecake but, was the best. No, the best thing to me were the Wetzel pretzels, pumpkin, bits. Number one, they didn't really taste a lot like pumpkin, but number two, they were bready and soft and yummy and savory. So give me savory stuff, you guys. And you have leftovers. <sighs> no, Eddie's mom has leftovers. So that was the best thing tonight. After we tasted all this pumpkin stuff though, I was really just wanting like real food. So we went to Tortilla Joe's and um, they have ceviche there, which is super low in points because it's fish and it's shrimp and it's tortillas or uh, tortilla chips, but that's like nothing. So I had ceviche, which is two smart points per serving and I had nine tortilla chips for three smart points. So five points total. Okay. So the two items that we missed, the flan and the pumpkin twist, equaled 15 smart points. And then the caramel popcorn that I decided not to count for all 12 points, I counted for nine. So I actually saved 18 points tonight from what I had planned. I saved 18 points and when I had the ceviche and tortilla chips, I spent six. So guys, I am still 12 points under what I planned. Yay! Look, I'm so he's, he's I'm so happy about that and um, I'm super full so I could have eaten less but I'm so happy that I'm under the points that I had planned so um, 
I have a few points to make up with fit points this week, but I think I can totally do it. I'm just super happy. And I know you guys think this was probably a frivolous night after being so on point and focused and determined this whole week and then to kind of blow it on this night, but I didn't blow it because we have planned this for so long. So we were finally able to work it in tonight and I'm just so happy that I was able to, number one, eat all the pumpkin things that I did, number two, count them all, and number three, work them all into my totals. So it you was a win, win, win. What are we gonna try? We should try Savory. Meat, meatloaf. Meatloaf. Okay, or, so you guys. Or that pot roast. So in uh, California Adventure, what is the name of the, the uh, food and wine? The food and wine festival is back. Oh, I wasn't thinking about that. It's the holiday food and wine festival and I can't come back for a long time. So I probably will not get to do the food and wine festival until January. But you guys, in January there are how many booths? 12. There are 12 food and wine festival booths. So I'm thinking we should come at least twice, do six booths for each visit, and I'm totally not gonna count points because the food from what I've seen already is amazing and creative. And it would be insane to try to count points, but we'll see. That's January. So thanks a lot, Disney. I can't come back for a while. In fact, the next time I'm coming back is like the day after Thanksgiving. Hey, we want... Then, I mean the day after Christmas. Then we can hit it. We can hit the food and no, wine. No, the day after Christmas. With I know. my sister. I know. She's it's not, not going to want to do that. It's not January. We can ditch her after a few days. So I'm coming back the day after or sometime right after Christmas with my sister and my niece and I have to use my super duper special expensive tickets to come but maybe we can hit a few food and wine festival booths. Anyway, we have to drive home now. Eddie's going to drive. Thank you, Eddie. I was going to sleep, but I have like major video to edit now, so. What time is it? It's late. <gasps> we can watch, we can listen to Coast to Coast on the way home. Talk to you guys later. Bye -bye, I'll show guys. you, you know what? I'm totally like not even that negative on points. Um, I have just a few fit points, extra fit points to earn this week. And even with my reduction in running, I can totally do it. And I feel really full right now, but I know I have literally six days to really pump up the focus and get totally in tune with the plan again before weigh-in. So I got this, you guys. I am totally on track for hitting my goals and I'm not gonna let the holiday season derail me. So, I got this. You got this, Eddie? I always have it. <laughs> you got you got my back? No, I got my, my own back. I got your back too. I'm here for you. I'll tell you all about the things I eat <laughs> oh, I on don't... my channel. Oh yeah, you guys, if you have not subscribed to Eddie's channel yet, you should because it's really, I think the most entertaining part of it is seeing when we do something together and seeing my perspective of it and his perspective of it. But as you know, Eddie is not on Weight Watchers. Eddie can eat kind of almost what he wants. And so Eddie does some awesome food reviews without me. If you want to see those, subscribe to his channel. It's Eddie Almanza on YouTube. Thank you for subscribing. Bye.